Hey, Randy, what you doing? Oh, hey, Dave. I'm just making a list of things that make me feel really, really good. Wearing Bombas socks. Trust me, that's number one on my list. Bomba socks feel so good because we use the smartest design and best materials, making them the most comfortable socks ever. Plus, because socks are the number one most requested clothing item in homeless shelters, we donate a pair for every pair purchased, and that feels pretty good, too. To shop Bombas or learn more about how your purchase supports those experiencing homelessness, go to bombas.com slash comfy and get 20% off your first purchase. Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Because every good. Yeah, praise, Amen. The Lord. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hello, everyone. This, this is Minister Vanessa Williams um, with His Abounding Grace. Um, this is when Christians speak, talk radio. And I'm just so thankful um, to God for having this platform to encourage someone today. Um, the message um, for tonight is peace. In the midst of grief and pain, peace in the midst of grief and pain. We know that there's a lot going on right now, and every time I turn around, there's some news, some sad news of someone who has lost a loved one. And I just want to encourage you this evening. We're going to start off by praying and and reading a couple of scriptures. And I just want to encourage someone to keep on keeping on because God hears you, He sees you, and He knows about your pain. And he'll never leave you alone. So let's just go to God in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Father, because you are so good to us, Lord God. In the midst of everything that's still going on, God, we can still have joy. We can still have peace, Lord God, because we know who our Redeemer is, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for never, never leaving us, for never taking your hands off of us, Father. Lord, as this word goes forth tonight, Lord God, I ask that the ears be tented, Lord God, that it would, um, they would be able to receive, their hearts would be open so they could be able to receive your word, Lord God, and so they could be encouraged and then in turn go out and encourage somebody else, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for... I just want to do your will, Father. So as I decrease and your word goes forth, Lord God, I pray that it will go forth as you said it would, Lord God, that you said when it goes forth, it would never return unto you voided. That is, it would never return unto you empty-handed. But it would go out and accomplish that which you have purposed for it to accomplish. So now, Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for all those who will be listening in tonight, Lord God. And, Lord, I thank you for all the many blessings that you have restored upon us, Father. And we give, we count it all joy right now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I don't plan to be before you too long tonight, um, but I did have a couple of scriptures I wanted to share with you and just to encourage you. And let's just see how everything goes, okay? Peace in the midst of grief and pain. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. The Living Bible paraphrase says, if you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace, talking about Jesus' peace, will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust him, as you trust in Christ Jesus. Now, I realize that some of you may have recently experienced the death of a loved one, and you still maybe um, suffering from the grief and the pain, and you're left wondering, when will my life return to normal? Some of you may have experienced another type of loss, the ending 
of a relationship that you believed would last forever. This is a grief of a different sort, but yet it may still be painful because you thought that relationship was going to be permanent. You thought the two of you would share life's ups and downs, the good and the bad, not just a fairy tale ending. You thought that the two of you would grow old together. Perhaps you opened up your heart to someone and you shared your deepest secrets. Perhaps that individual's actions hurt you so deeply that you were saying to yourself, or perhaps you may even be asking God, why God? Why me? When will this pain ever end? Perhaps after months or even years of being in this relationship, you found out that this relationship was simply, simply not meant to be. And because you had invested so much of your time, so much of your love, so much of your energy into it, you are devastated. And you find yourself mourning the loss of what could have been, what would have been, what you believe what should have been. I'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> Whether it's the passing of a loved one or the ending of a relationship, the pain's still real and you're still hurting. He says in his word, Psalms 30, chapter, the fifth verse, weeping may endure for a night, but joy shall come in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. This may be the season that you are living in right now, but joy shall come in the morning. That's when your weeping is turned into dancing. Oh, yeah, I'll say that again. There's going to come a time when your weeping will turn into dancing. I can't tell you when your morning will come, but I can reassure you that your night isn't as long as it has been. Your night will not last forever. Weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy shall come in the morning. Shall does not mean it might come. It doesn't mean maybe or perhaps it'll come. Shall, according to the word of God, means it's going to happen. Psalms 30, chapter 11, verses, Thou hast turned for me, this is David speaking, Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, and girded me with, glass, with gla gladness. There is going to come a day, I want to encourage you, there is going to come a day when joy will rise to the surface. There is going to come a day when grief won't be as overwhelming as it is for you today. There is going to come a day when your pain won't hurt so bad. There is going to come a day when precious memories will help to bridge the gap between pain and joy between what was and what is to be. There is going to come a day when your morning will certainly turn into dancing. That day, my friend, might seem like it's way off in the distance for you right now, but God knows when it is. Now, I'm not trying to minimize your grief or your pain. I'm just here to simply encourage you that your weeping is only temporary. This too shall pass. Weeping endures for a night, but my friend, your joy is going to come. In the meanwhile, I want to encourage you to stand firm on God's promises. So in the midst of your weeping, in the midst of your heartache, in the midst of your grieving, in the midst of your pain, you can rest assured that it's going to get better. Although in your life it might be a little cloudy outside right now, the sun is still shining. It's just hidden by the clouds. Yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. Get this. The dark clouds will slowly separate, and the sun will shine through bright for you again. So for those of you who are grieving right now from the passing of a loved one, get this. When the sun breaks through the dark clouds, it's going to bring memories of laughter, memories of happiness, memories of joking, of good times, precious memories. I know what I'm talking about. Memories will always remain with you, and every once in a while, you'll be reminded of those happier times you shared with your loved one. It might be a tune of a special song, and you'll find yourself in memory lane, humming or singing that tune and laughing out loud. That time is going to come. It might be a simple smell as you enter into a room that serves as a gentle reminder, and you sniff with sound memories, not tears. It might be a place or a scene that you visit 
when you will be reminded of a time spent with him or her, and that will be comforting to you. Trust me, I know, and I agree that these are hard times that we're living in right now. So many people are dying. So many family members have lost loved ones during this season. You know, just yesterday I was talking with a neighbor of mine. I was trying to encourage her, and she still grieves from the loss of both, get this, her son who passed in February of this year and her husband who passed in May of this year. Her husband of only of over 50 years, both deaths within months of each other. You see, her pain is still real. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was talking with a dear long-term time friend who had just lost her husband of over 50 years to COVID-19. Her pain is real. Then just a few days ago, a cousin of mine stopped by. We were chatting, and actually she's the wife of my first cousin who passed last year. This widow who's still grieving from the death of her husband last year, her pain is real. Several months ago, I received news that a cousin who was a classmate of mine has, had just lost her husband, who was also a classmate. Her pain is real. Yes, you see, I've experienced firsthand what it feels like to lose dear loved ones. And while time makes it easier to breathe and pressure memories definitely help to ease the grief, the pain is still real. It's tough. It's raw. It's real. I share all of this to say, yes, I do know what it's like. I do know what it feels like to grieve. I know the pain, but I also know how my God took care of me during these times. Yes, grief is real. Pain is real. Suffering is real. But, and get this, there is hope. So I come to bring you hope this evening. And there is peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. You see, I know it's a cold, dark, dreary world we live in today with so much going on, most often so much bad media reports, that if we're not careful and if we're not prayerful, we can easily slip into a depressed state of being. And times when a lot of people are isolated, especially now living alone, loneliness can feel like a very dark and dreary place. Please take comfort, my friend, and knowing that Jesus knows about this, that Jesus cares about you, and that Jesus is right there always with his hands outstretched for you. Yes, we can take comfort in the arms of our Father, talking about our Heavenly Father, and get this, only a prayer away. There is peace that surpasses all understanding, and this peace is wrapped up in Jesus. John 16th chapter in the 33rd verse, Jesus speaks here. He says, I've told you all this so that you will have peace of heart and mind. Here on, her, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. So take comfort, my friend, and the security of being wrapped up in your father's arms, in your father's arms where there's rest from all disappointments, all of your pain, all of your suffering, all of your fears. For in our Father's arms, there is peace. Jesus tells us in John 14th chapter and the 27th verse, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth gives out unto you. And then Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, in my Father's house, there is hope. Jesus comforts his disciples in this chapter, in the 14th chapter, and the first verse he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house has many rooms. If there was, that was not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. You see, here Jesus had just finished having supper with his beloved, beloved disciples. He had just told Judas, who was betray him, whatever you got to do, do it quickly. So now Jesus, knowing that his earthly time with them was coming to an end, for he knew he was headed to that old rugged cross, Jesus was preparing his beloved disciples for his temporary separation. He was explaining to them that he had to go away, 
but that it was necessary in order for him to prepare a place for them. And he didn't want them to grieve. He didn't want them to wear it. He was trying to reassure them that it was already all right. And just as these words were meant to comfort his disciples when Jesus knew he had to leave them, these words are still words of comfort to us today, words to reassure us, words to strengthen us, words to encourage us, words to remind us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let not your heart be troubled, my friend. For Jesus says, I'm going away to a place to prepare for you in my Father's house. These are words to live by, Jesus' words. You see, God, our Heavenly Father, the creator of everything, he's the one who shaped the entire universe by simply saying, let there be. The one who knew us even before we were born, the one who breathed the bird life into us, he knows everything that you are going through right now, my friend. You see, these scriptures let us know that we can have hope great expectation that not only that Jesus would never leave us or forsake us, but that our Father is preparing a place for us to be with him in all eternity. And therefore, this hope that lies within us affirms that we live a victorious life right now, wrapped in his loving arms. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So slip into your father's arms, for in your father's arms there is love, eternal love, agape love, unconditional love. God loves us so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe this, my friend? Do you believe that God extended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, His son, Jesus, died for us. You see, Jesus has gone away to prepare a heavenly home for us, for those who accept us as Savior, for those who accept him as Savior. So separation from our dearly departed loved ones, those who died believing in Jesus' birth, death, burial, and resurrection is only a temporary separation. For those of us who have accepted Jesus as our Savior, we have hope that we will see our loved ones again, that we will be reunited with them, and that reunion will last forever. Hope in eternity in our Father's house. You see, in my Father's house, just says Jesus, there are many mansions, and it is a prepared place for a prepared people. Are you, my friend, prepared to spend eternity with Jesus? Then you can take comfort in knowing that you will spend eternity with your loved ones who died believing in Jesus and who have received him and to their hearts. If you are not prepared to spend eternity with Jesus, it's not too late. If you can hear my voice this evening, it's not too late. And you can have that hope. Psalms 31, 24 says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Now stay with me here. Stay with me for the end of this message. I will share further scriptures that will lead you to salvation if you have not already received that personal relationship with God. So do you believe God's word? Do you believe that there's a prepared place for a prepared people? Colossians first chapter, the fifth verse says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherein you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You see, we can have this blessed hope. If you are grieving from the passing of a loved one right now, hang on to this hope, my friend. This eternal hope and this prepared place will prepare people. For God himself will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Now, even now, you can find rest, peace, and love in Jesus' arms. If you are grieving from the loss, of a departure of a relationship turned sour, a relationship that you believed would last forever, get this. And my prayer, my prayer is that you will receive what I'm about to say right now. Jesus says, the word of God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. That's the living Bible paraphrase. 
So I want you to take comfort and know that God knows what his will is for your life. You see, sometimes sometimes God will remove people from your life that he knows won't line up with his purpose for you. Let me say that again. Sometimes God will remove people from your life that he knows won't line up with his purpose for you. It might not feel good to you at the time, but based on the word of God, all things are working together for your good. That's why it's so important to trust him. Proverbs 3rd chapter, 5th and the 6th verse says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You see, I understand. I get this. And sometimes God is attempting to get your attention. God is attempting to get your attention to direct your path, but you keep bucking him because you believe you know what's best. You believe you know who's best for you. Sometimes God is trying to get you on the right path, but you keep making those detours, thinking you know what's best for you. Regarding that failed relationship, let me ask you this. Did God bring that person into your life? Was Jesus front and center in that relationship? Matthew 6, chapter 33, verse says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all other things will be added. So concerning that relationship, that failed relationship, was Jesus the center, in the center of it? Was Jesus in the center of it? Remember, you see, remember and take comfort in this. For I believe what God has for you, my brother, is for you. Maybe you are at a turning point where you need to rest in Jesus. So I say to you, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still, my sister, be still. Are you ready to receive this truth? If so, and if you need, you need to forgive that person for the hurt and pain, go ahead and do that quickly. Remember, forgiveness is for you and not for the other person. When true forgiveness happens, you'll be able to move on and have that peace that surpasses all understanding then you would know that there truly is light at the end of a tunnel. Then you would truly know that the sun does come out tomorrow because God knows what you need and who you need in your life. Do you believe God? Do you trust God? Yes, you see, God knows all, sees all, and hears all. He loves you so very much, and he cares for you so unconditionally. Just as he knew the emotions his disciples were feeling when they had, he had to leave them for a temporary season, he knows whatever grief, trials, temptations, whatever troubles, whatever heartaches or disappointments you may be experiencing right now. And just like my Jesus felt the pain and wept when life, wept when Lazarus, the brother of his dear friends, Mary and Martha, had died and he saw how they were grieving, he feels your pain also today. So take comfort in the words written in John 11th chapter, the 25th verse, where Jesus said unto her, talking about Martha, the sister of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this, is what Jesus was asking Martha. And Jesus wants these words to encourage you today, my friend, right now, as you rest in his arms. Psalms 9, chapter 9, verse 6 tells us that Jesus also would be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. God, who knows all about each and every one of us, he loves us. He loves you, my friend, and he cares for you more than you would ever know. So for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts, We don't have to wait until we get to heaven to experience all the wonderful things that our Father has in store for us because he's given us his beautiful fruit of the Spirit. He's given us peace so we can live in victory right now, resting in our Father's arms. Right here on earth, he wants us to live in victory. Let's think about this. In my Father's arms, in your Father's arms, there is love. For love is the greatest thing that God has given us given us, and it covers a multitude of faults. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, 
I can't even wrap my mind around the depth and breadth of God's love, and I'm sure you can't either. In my Father's arms, there is love and peace. Jesus tells us in John 14th chapter, the 27th verse, and I'll repeat this again. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, giveth unto you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My friend, in our Father's arms, there's joy. There is joy. John 15, 15th chapter and 11th verse, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. In my Father's heart, there is protection. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs unto it and is safe, according to Proverbs 18th chapter and the 10th verse. You see, in my father's arms, and he's your father too, there is no fear, for perfect love casts out fear. You know, God knows that life won't always be filled with happy times for us. He knows that into each of our lives a little rain must fall sometime. He knows that our road will get tough, rough, and rocky sometime. And he knows that we won't always understand, and most of the time we won't understand, why certain things happen to the people we love or even to us. And so Jesus encourages us just as, just as he was encouraging his beloved disciples. He's encouraging us today for Jesus cares for us so much. He wants you to know that there is safety and security in his arms, so I encourage you to know that tonight. I encourage you to know that there is comfort and serenity in Jesus' arms. I encourage you to know that there is peace that surpasses all understanding, all wrapped up in the loving arms of our Savior. Jesus is asking you to do something. He's simply asking you to believe in him. He's saying, if you believe in God the Father, the very one who gave you life, the very one who searches you and knows you're downsitting, you're uprising, if you believe in God the Father, the very one who sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins, if you believe in God the Father, the very one who can even make the winds obey, then take it one step further. Believe also in me, for I am his son. And then Jesus goes on to reassure us that if you just believe in him, if you just trust him, everything is going to be all right. You see, sometimes it might appear, my friend, that God is asleep when you're going through. Perhaps you've lost your spouse. And the nights are so long and dark, and the days are just full with so much pain, and you just feel so overwhelmed. And I just want to encourage you tonight. I just want to encourage you that Jesus is not asleep, that God never sleeps. He knows all things because he's all-knowing. He's omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. So I need you to embrace his spirit of peace. He's already given us everything we need. We just need to embrace it, even in the midst of grief, and pain. You see, in our Father's arms, there is peace. Even in the midst of a raging storm, there is peace. So keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus, for everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Yes, I know your grief is real. Yes, I know your pain is real. Yes, I know there's suffering all around us right now. But get this, in the words of our Savior himself, I have already overcome the world. I have already overcome the world, John 16 and 33. He tells us in the world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. So just rest in him, for he is the God of peace. He is the Prince of peace. Rest in him, just like a child rests in his mother's arms. You can rest in him and be confident that he knows and he cares. If you believe that God will keep you in perfect peace, if you believe this, he would keep you in perfect peace, then you believe his word. His word says if you, he would keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Just trust him, my friend. Just trust him. For in our Father's arms there is comfort. You see, for moments such as these, through it all, Jesus wants to simply have our trust. He, to believe him, he tells us that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake you. So I'm encouraging you tonight that Jesus said in his word, he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. Trust him. Trust him in his word. Take comfort in his word. Take comfort 
in his word. Matthew 11, chapter 28, verse, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that lazy, and I have a laden, I will give you rest. So in spite of sadness, in spite of a difficult season, remember, God is yet, safe, yet faithful. If he said he would never leave you, even your darkest hour, you can rest assured. For he is a God who is faithful concerning his promises. God is a God that cannot lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not, but praise God, he changes things. Amen. He changes things. So while you might be going through a grieving period right now, it's not, It's going to be all right. You may think that all things are lost. You may think that all your friends are gone. You may think that your heart is breaking into pieces. I'm here to remind you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to reassure you that Jesus would never, never leave you. When sorrow tries to overtake you, when sorrow tries to overshadow everything else, I want you to hold his word very dear to your heart, that God is yet faithful and true, and that his word is forever settled in heaven. So while you might not see that Jesus is still with you, and sometimes you might not even feel like he's still with you, on occasion you may may think you're all alone, but every once in a while, every once in a while, you feel a tug at your heart, and you'll be reassured that he's still with you. For if you believe in Jesus, you'll know that he's still with you, that his spirit will always remain. We may endure for a night, but joy, oh, sweet, sweet joy, joy shall come in the morning. And when your morning is here, that's when your sorrow will cease. That's when your joy will come. Remember, in the midst of your sorrow, and in spite of everything that you might be going through right now, say to yourself, yet will I trust him. Yet will I trust him. For you can draw strength from the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You can draw strength from Jesus' word when he tells you, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus wants you to believe that today. He wants you to believe that today. Now, some of you who are listening to my voice might not have accepted Jesus as your Savior. And so everything I'm saying to you right now, you might it might sound foreign to you. I want to take a minute because I don't want you to wait until tomorrow, for tomorrow is not promised. If you have not, have not made Jesus the Lord and Savior, I'm talking about a heart self confession, please do it right now. Jesus wants you to come to him just as your heart. Don't think that you have to get it all right before you go to him because guess what? Get this. You'll never get it all right. You'll never get it all right. You can't do that alone. With all of our hangers, with all of our baggage, he wants you to come to him right now with baggage and all, and he wants to make you brand new. If you'll take this one step, he will take care of the next one and the next one and the next one. Because in my father's house, despair, fear, loneliness, disappointment, hopelessness, these things may touch us in difficult times and dry seasons and tough surroundings, but nothing, get this, nothing touches us without God's permission, without God's knowledge. Nothing touches us without God's approval. Nothing touches us without God's ability to intervene. For God truly is our refuge in the midst of it all. So why don't you rest in him? Rest in your father right now. So, again, if you're not accepting him as your Savior, it's not too late. If you're hearing this message, it's not too late. Right now he stands ready with open arms to welcome you home. If you're not saved, if you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, repented of your sins and accepted Jesus into your heart, if you're not 100% sure that you'll spend eternity in heaven, I want you to listen very closely. Nobody can save you but Jesus. There is only one way to God, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. There is only one way to God, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. John 14th chapter, the sixth verse, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse says, Neither is there salvation 
and any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So are you saved? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Have you made the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord? You see, Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You need to admit that you are a sinner. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You need to repent. And that, what that means is you need to turn from sin. You need to turn away from sin. You need to believe that Jesus Christ died for you, that he was buried, and that he rose from the dead. So Romans 10.10 10 says, so with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And through prayer, you can ask Jesus to come into your life right now and to become your personal Savior. For Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you might be saying, well, what do I pray? Well, I'm going to want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's a simple prayer. But if you sincerely pray from your heart, then get this. Jesus hears you and he receives you. Okay? Dear God, I am a sinner, and I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I am willing to turn from sin. I now invite Christ to come into my heart and my life as my personal Savior. Amen. If you just trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, get this. You have just begun a wonderful new life with Christ. And angels in heaven are rejoicing with us right now, right this very moment. Let us know about it. Write us and let us know about it. Give us a call and let us know that you just accepted Christ into your heart. And then read your Bible every day to get to know Jesus Christ better. Talk to him. Talk to God every day. See, if you just receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Savior, get this. Not only can you have the assurance that he is there preparing a place for you, you can have that assurance that there is rest in your Father's arms. You can have that assurance that there is restoration in your Father's arms. You can have that assurance that there is comfort, unspeakable comfort, in your Father's arms, even in the midst of your grief, even in the midst of your pain. And this is what I want to remind you to encourage you, to reassure you that it might not feel like it right now, but guess what? Peace is keeping you. It might not look like it right now, but guess what? Peace is keeping you. For Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And Jesus is not slack concerning his promises. So I hope these words have been some encouragement to you, that whether you have been grieving through the loss of a loved one or whether you have been grieving through the um, departure or separation of a long-term relationship, a relationship you thought was going to go somewhere, but it's not or it hasn't. Get this. God knows, God sees you, and God hears you. And above all else, God loves you so deeply, my friend, so deeply. Rest in him. Rest in his arms, knowing, trusting, and believing that your best days are ahead of you. Knowing, trusting, and believing that he got your back. Knowing, trusting, and believing that if God said it, that settles it. Amen, amen, and amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your word, Father, that's gone forth. And I believe, Lord God, that it has encouraged someone to keep on keeping on. I believe, Lord God, that it has lessened somebody's pain somewhere, Father. I trust, Lord God, that those who have accepted you as their Savior just now, Lord God, that they will trust that as a treasure that it is, Lord God, and just hold it dear to their hearts, Lord God, and don't let anything or anybody come and try to um, be a distraction to them. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that as they go forth, Lord God, they will in turn encourage somebody else, Lord God, that somebody else can keep on keeping on. Because that's what it's about. That's what you told us to do, Lord God, to make disciples of men, Father, to encourage each other, to reach the lost, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you that you have allowed us, Lord God, to reach out to your people. And I'm claiming by faith that they have received what has been put forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Van, for an awesome word. Amen. Peace in the midst of grief and pain. Amen.
Thank you so much. That's an awesome word. Praise God. We got a couple of quick announcements. I pray that if you'd like to get in contact with Minister Vans, you can do so by going to WinChristmasSpeak at gmail.com. Also, you can go to our website, WinChristmasSpeak.com. And also, you can contact us um, through social media on Facebook, amen, under When Christians Speak. Amen. I want to remind you that History Bound and Grace broadcast with Minister Vanessa Williams is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We also have other broadcasts, declaring the finish work with Reverend Pat Randall this Thursday at 12 noon. Friday night, Joy with Reverend Ray. Amen. It's Friday at 7 p.m. The Bread of Life with Reverend Ray is the first and the third Sunday at 7 p.m. Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our monthly broadcasts are as follows. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Artiston, and Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month at 7 p.m. Takeover, the Body of One with Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson is every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Hour three, real life, real men, real talk. With Ray Rose, Elston Green, Cleopas Malone, and Tyrone Rose, and Antonio Mitchell is every second Sunday at 7 p.m. Our weekly prayer is called Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. It's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. This is a free conference call. The number is 641-715-3580. That's his code is 732499. So with that being said, again, Mr. Van, thank you for the awesome word. We will definitely listen to this again. Please share. Amen. Uh, if you'd like to find more information about the sign up, go to winchristmasbeat.com. Uh, we also have a donation page. Or you can sow a seed there to the ministry. We are listed as a 501c3 company. Amen. And we'd love to hear, hear from you. God bless you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Amen. Man. God bless you. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance and more, and Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com or contact your local agent today. Socks are the number one most requested item in homeless shelters. Underwear is the second, shirts are third. At Bombas, socks were first. Made with comfortable details for everyday wearing. Then underwear and shirts too. All designed to perfectly fit. At Bombas, every item you purchase means you're donating an essential clothing item to someone in need. One comfortable clothing item for you, one donated to someone in need. Bombas. Comfort for all. Get 20% off your purchase at bombas.com comfy.